Hello, buzzers. We are at it another day. Let me know that you guys can all hear me all right. Um, go ahead and put a one. Go ahead, put a one in the chat. Let me know that you can hear me okay. Yeah, once we can make sure that the audio is good, we can get started. Okay, it looks like we're good. Um, today we're coming together and we're gonna be discussing CKD and uh, milk. What milk is good for patients? What milk is not good for patients? Why? We're going to get right into it. Uh, we come to you today wishing you and your loved ones uh, strong health and safety. Uh, we know that uh, this information is really important to a lot of patients. We're getting tremendous feedback uh, on the videos, and we love to see that. Please make sure that you like these videos and you share them with other people who could find the content valuable. Um, also support the platform via Cash App, Kidney Buzz on Cash App, PayPal, Patreon, and kidneybuzz.com forward slash donate. Uh, kidneybuzz.com forward slash donate. You can take a look here. It is very easy to uh, donate to the platform. Uh, it's a matter of maybe one, two steps. So you go kidneybuzz.com forward slash donate. You come here, kidneybuzz.com, uh, and you just go ahead and determine do how much you want to donate. So if you want to donate 10 bucks, and then how frequently. Do you want it to recur on a monthly basis, or do you want to just do it one time? Whatever the case might be, go ahead and select and then it can take you on how you can donate directly to the platform. All donations are much appreciated um, and we hope that you guys continue to do so. We've been getting a lot of support and we wanna see that continue. So what's the deal with dairy? As kids, many of us were encouraged to drink milk to grow strong and keep our bones healthy. The USDA recommends two to three servings of dairy per day depending on age, weight, and sex for a healthy diet. So when they're referring to dairy and milk, they're typically referring to cow's milk. With regard to cow's milk, it provides essential nutrients, including protein, calcium, vitamin D, and many other vitamins and minerals. So if milk is such a good food and healthy or drink, uh, such a healthy option, then why is it so controversial? Because a lot of patients, they don't even, uh, whether you're nearing dialysis, on dialysis, um, trying to maintain your kidney function or post-transplant, they're told, you know, kind of avoid milk and that's what they do. But they still want milk for their uh, coffee or for their um, it's cereal or with their oatmeal, but they kind of just avoid it entirely because um, it's it's kind of controversial. So let's delve into it. Is milk is milk a good option for kidney patients? Limiting milk uh, and other dairy products to just four to eight ounces per day is recommended for people with kidney disease. So that's all dairy, right? much less than the USDA suggests. The main reason dairy is limited for people with kidney disease is that it is very rich in minerals. This is especially the case with phosphorus and potassium, of course, calcium as well. When kidneys are not functioning well, they become less efficient at removing extra phosphorus and potassium from the body, especially as kidney disease progresses. So as your kidneys fail, more and more, the uh, less 
able they are to remove potassium and phosphorus from your um, body. Calcium can build up and cause a lot of uh, nasty things like gout and kidney stones and this nature. And so for that reason, patients are oftentimes encouraged to avoid milk. Now, common question that we get asked here a lot is, okay, well, what, what about the fat co uh, concentration? If I have milk with less fat, uh, low fat milk, does that make a difference? So the answer to that, we'll go ahead and put up the chart here with the with regard to um, the fat concentrations in milk. Right, so these are the fat concentrations in milk. Uh, milk, skim milk, low fat milk, reduced fat, and you can kind of see how much calories, potassium, fat, carbohydrates, uh, protein back here, we have phosphorus, we have calcium. And you can kind of see here, especially as it relates to the latter tail of the uh, chart, uh, the graph here, um, you can kind of see that it's not, there's not a huge difference with regard to the fat concentration. You have whole milk here with 375 milligrams of potassium, and you have 1% with 391 milligrams of potassium. So you can see that the difference is not significant. That's because all types of milk are high in potassium and phosphorus and are a good source for calcium, right? Which is typically a great thing. Uh, but for patients, kidney patients, again, because they have that issue with their kidney function and the inability to relieve these nutrients from their body, um, it's not such a good thing. Okay, so we're going to move beyond cow's milk at this point to another option that patients have, which is milk alternatives, okay, plant-based milk. And a lot of people, a lot of patients attribute this to almond milk, and they say, I can't stand almond milk. We get that, um, but there's a lot of alternatives that here when we're going to touch on most of them, and some that you probably didn't even know were available. But before we get into that, we want to touch on the fact that some tips here, such as label reading, it's going to be a huge ar uh, piece of your arsenal to read the labels of any types of milk that you choose to uh, drink, right? Plant-based milk and dairy products do not have the same nutritional profile as cow's milk, but are often enriched with the vitamins and minerals to make them a more comparable substitute. When fortifying plant-based milk, food manufacturers commonly add potassium and phosphorus, two minerals that to look out for with any type of milk that you choose to um, add to your diet. Again, I wanna emphasize that Kidney Buzz, we're not giving you medical advice, we're giving you information that can improve the quality of your life. And so take this information and share it with your team and identify the best strategy and approach uh, for you. I just wanna make sure that we can still, everyone can still hear me all right. Let's go ahead and double check that. Let's go ahead and double check the audio. Give me one moment. <clears throat> and we're going to get into some serious milk alternatives. Um, but just a tip here, um, FOSS in plant-based milks is a good sign of phos added phosphorus. So that's something you're going to want to look out for. Okay, and we're good with the sound. For example, almond milk, rice milk, and soy milk contain about 20 milligrams, 50 milligrams, and 80 to 150 milligrams of phosphorus per cup on average. Um, so that's significantly lower than the cow's milk, which is like 250 milligrams. 
right? So uh, that's the benefit. And where you're going to see this, it's a, be comparable to compare, is by looking at um, FOSS on the label. It may not say phosphorus directly, okay? But FOSS indicates um, that phosphorus is added, okay? Also, another word, phosphate. Phosphate also typically uh, shows when phosphorus is added to milk. Potassium and alternative milk. And so the potassium content of plant-based milk uh, varies. Uh, while some plant-based milk options naturally contain more potassium, others have very little. So fortunately, potassium is now listed in uh, the nutrition facts label. So there is no question about how much potassium is packed into eight ounces of milk alternative. However, make sure that you look and see um, so that you can actually determine, okay, this has X amount of potassium and this meets my dietary goals, okay? These are gonna be huge, very impactful to your um, overall outcomes. Um, now let's look at the alternatives, all right? We're gonna look at milk alternatives at this point. And what are some uh, alternatives that we have and that we're gonna cover? We're gonna cover rice milk. We're gonna cover soy milk, almond milk. Um, we're gonna cover oat milk. We're gonna cover cashew milk. And then we also have a couple surprise milk alternatives to cover and touch on, okay? But just in case you want that information, rice milk, soy milk, almond milk, oat milk, cashew milk are all perspective alternatives that you can look at and incorporate into your diet, typically safe for CKD patients. But again, you're going to want to talk to your team about it to confirm. Okay. So rice milk. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and share the screen with you. And by the way, leave in the comments, uh, Leave in the comments what milks you enjoy drinking and uh, why and how they've made a difference for your diet and your outcomes. Um, we're here to help. This is a platform to help as many patients as possible, wherever they stand in the spectrum, stage one to stage five, to post uh, dialysis with a kidney transplant. And of course, dialysis patients. So when you leave your experiences down below, Others that come and watch the video can gain and learn from them. Rice milk is one of the original plant-based milk options available on the market. A key benefit is that rice is not a top allergen and does not contain lactose. Therefore, it's an, ex it's an excellent option for people with an allergy to milk, soy, or lactose intolerance. Rice milk is an excellent choice for people with kidney disease because it is naturally low. Here's the key aspect of it, right? It's naturally low in potassium, phosphorus, and protein. Remember, always to check the label to make sure that um, you're avoiding the right ingredients. Different manufacturers add different things, right? And we're talking about basic milk. We're not talking about sweetened milk or uh, chocolate milk or strawberry milk. No. We're just talking about the basic type of milk alternatives. Number two, soy milk. Um, another one of the original milk alternatives, soy milk, is naturally higher in potassium and phosphorus than many other plant-based dairy options. The amount of potassium varies by brand, but averages about 350 milligrams per eight ounce serving, while phosphorus can range from uh, 80 milligrams to 250 milligrams. That's kind of on the higher side. So of course, what are you gonna wanna do? Take in less than eight milligrams. Take in half of that, take in four milligrams. Oh, excuse me, take in rather than eight ounces, take in four ounces, you know, cut that in half. And then you would cut the uh, uh, intake of potassium and phosphorus relatively in half as well. Um, look at well we don't want to yeah so number three is almond milk okay almond milk is an excellent option for people with ckd because it is naturally lower in potassium and phosphorus it is also very low in protein 
So um, it is perfect for those following a low or very low protein diet. Uh, oftentimes patients follow a low or very low protein diet when they are getting close to dialysis when they're, they are in um, later stages of kidney decline because uh, low protein diets are easier on the kidneys so they don't cause your kidneys to work as hard uh, but patients that are in stage three and two also, you know also sometimes follow a low protein diet so if you're following a low protein diet then almond milk uh, really helps with that because it doesn't have um, very much protein in it relatively speaking if you are limiting your calcium in your diet be aware that some brands of almond milk are fortified with up to 500 milligrams per serving, okay? That's half the recommended 1,000 milligrams per day, okay? Calcium for depends on, you know, where you are, what stage you are. For some patients, it's a lot more important to limit your calcium than other patients. But again, this is where reading the label comes into play. If you're on dialysis, typically you are asked to limit your uh, your calcium intake, okay? So read the labels, work with your team, and determine what's best for you and your diet. Oat milk. Um, oat milk's one of the dairy-free newcomers on the block, but it is increasing in popularity. One of the things that people love about it is that it is creamy and it is allergy-free. That's according to our research here. You need to make sure that it's allergy free for you, that you're not allergic to oats, but it is creamy and rich. Oat milk is higher in carbohydrates and protein than many other milk alternatives. Uh, and then many of the oat milk products available are also higher in sugar, okay? So it comes with a mixed bag. Yes, it's really rich, it's really creamy, it tastes great, I've had it myself, but what comes with that oftentimes, higher amounts of sugar. Like they said here, higher amounts of protein. So make sure that it's right for you and what you're aiming for, but oat milk, definitely add it to your list to look into, um, add it to your carton at the store if it makes sense for you. Okay, and then cashew milk is another plant-based milk made by from nuts. Um, though not nearly as popular as almond milk, right? So this one's a little lesser known, cashew milk. Nevertheless, it is a deliciously creamy option that works well as a topper for cereal or a great thing uh, to add to your morning coffee. So the cashew milk is really uh, great in the morning. Um, it's nice and rich and creamy like oat milk, but it doesn't have as much protein. Cashews are chock full of heart healthy uh, mon monosaturated fats and minerals like iron, magnesium, zinc, and copper. Unfortunately, much of this can get lost in the process of making cashew milk. Well, that's unfortunate uh, for some patients and other patients, it might actually be a blessing in disguise because you don't want too many minerals in your diet if, you, if your kidneys are not functioning at a high rate. Most cashew milk products contain 150 milligrams of potassium or less, which is a good amount. It's rather low, making a good choice when limiting potassium. Also, check the label for phosphorus ad additives. When we researched, we found at least one brand was using added phosphorus, so uh, phosphate. But yeah, it's phosphorus. So just check your labels. Again, that's one of the biggest arsenals that are going to be in your tool kit um check your labels make sure everything matches your diet work closely with your team um, we are all a team here but work closely with your um health care team okay uh now some bonuses some bonus uh milk alternatives include uh coconut milk Coconut milk can get a bit confusing because it comes in two different forms. Canned coconut milk, fresh, fresh coconut mixed with just a little water 
is full of fat and deliciously creamy. Canned coconut milk is simply used for cooking. And because it's full of fresh coconut, it contains about 300 me milligrams of potassium per one cup serving. Fortunately, with canned coconut milk, a little goes a long way to get what that creamy coconut flavor. I like to add coconut milk to a nice cup of tea. You don't need a lot of coconut milk. You just need a little bit. And it's very tasty, okay? Coconut milk beverage. Um, this has more water added to it, to, so it's thinner. So this is like a coconut milk beverage. It has more water. It's thinner in consistency, uh, right? It is typically much lower in potassium, but always check the label. So that's coconut milk, and it comes in two forms. It comes in a can and it comes fresh. Uh, also, another interesting milk that you might want to look into is hemp milk. Okay, go ahead and okay. So hemp milk, it's tasty, also very rich, very creamy. Um, it's made from hemp seeds, which are a great source of two essential fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6. Hemp seeds also contain minerals uh, and small amounts of amino acids. Hemp milk can be an excellent option for those who have an allergy to nuts or soy. So that's why I wanted to include this. For patients that have allergies to nuts or soy, hemp milk might be a good option for you to talk to your team. Um, however, there are limited options available on the market. Um, so just, you know, if it's in your local store, you might be able to get it online. We'll do, your, do your research, okay? And the last one we're gonna mention here is walnut milk. This is also limited in supply. You don't see a lot of walnut milk, but this is an option. Walnut milk is another <clears throat> nut milk with just two options available. Um, one of the benefits of walnut milk over other nut milks is that walnuts are an excellent source of essential omega-3 fatty acids, okay? So in both of those cases, hemp milk and walnut milk, what did we do? We gave you guys options that are also good in omega-3 fatty acids which help with heart health as well. So by choosing um, these hemp milk or walnut milk, it also helps with improving heart health. So that might be something you want to further explore. Okay, that's what we have for you today. Please make sure that you go to kidneybuzz.com forward slash donate and uh, drop a few bucks in the collection plate. It is much appreciated. It helps us to do what we love to do, which is bring you guys daily content that is fresh, that is not being done right now by anybody else. Also, we will ask you to uh, share the video, like the video, and subscribe to our YouTube. We'll see you tomorrow. Be well, be safe.